Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Lord, we enter in, consuming fire, sweet perfume, truly your awesome presence, it fills this room, consuming fire. You're the sweet perfume Your awesome presence Your changing presence Your lifting presence Your mighty presence Your glorious presence Mysterious presence your precious presence it fills this room consuming fire sweet perfume i see your awesome presence that's what makes the difference it fills this room so I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. So let the weight of your glory cover us. Kataparata posada brati la kaporia da bala. Your river flow, your river flow. Let this truth. Of your kingdom reigning us, empower us. Let the weight of your glory Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Shalom, shalom, 
Jehovah Shalom Shalom You're welcome in this place Koinonia welcomes you oh God Shalom Shalom Jehovah Shalom Shalom You're welcome in this place the presence of the Father. You bring to our midst the presence of heaven. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy,
mighty, 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 mighty. Cherubims, 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 oh, cherubims, 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 cherubims. Seraphims, 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 the protectors of his holiness. Seraphims, 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 seraphims. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. because this is a place of encounter this is the protocol of an encounter when you invoke his presence in worship then he comes Lord Jesus thank you may the name of the Lord forever be lifted in this place May religion never ever replace your presence in this place. May this place remain a place of encounter. Encounter with the Spirit of God. Encounter with the precepts of the kingdom. Encounter with the powers of the age to come. Strengthen us, O oh God, by the Spirit of Revelation. Let the vistas of the heavens be open as we explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Make us strong. May we be the ones that know their God. And may we do exploits. 
Hallelujah. Just the voices. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, my eyes will see and my heart will receive. Pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may behold one of The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And also is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 49. And as we have borne the image, oh hallelujah. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I'd like us to read verse 49. Read it with understanding. One to read. Please help us with the fun. The Bible says, as we have borne it begins to give us a contrast of inhabitants and beings in this earth. Right? When you read the preceding verses, it says there are different kinds of bodies. Please listen to me. The teaching tonight will bless you. It said there are some bodies that are terrestrial. There are some bodies that are celestial. And all of them are within this territory. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, in the same way, since we have borne the image of the earthly, there is a system in God that can help us manifest experientially the image of the heavenly. And this is what I'm going to be dealing with very briefly tonight. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. Help us, O oh Lord. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. As we have borne the image of the earthly, so we will bear the image of the heavenly. Verse 10. One to read if you are there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? Not on earth. Not on earth. Thy will be done in earth. In the same way your will has been done in heaven. 
in heaven your will has been done and that's why the fullness of your kingdom find expression but lord let your kingdom find expression in the earth in the same degree in the same dimension and in the same similitude hallelujah tonight i want to share with us something that has helped my life through the years and is still helping my life this for me is one of the keys to carrying very heavy weights of the glory the light the power the beauty of the kingdom upon your life if you will pay attention to what i'm about to teach you in these few minutes and you believe it and you walk in that light then you will find out that first Corinthians 15 from verse 49 will become your testimony that here and now you will be a manifestation of a reality that is not obtained in this realm. You will walk as though a God upon the earth. Hallelujah. Jesus began to talk and he said, when you pray, let this be part of the content of your prayer our father who resides in the heavens and he says we hallow you revere him come to him with the spirit of reverence and worship and after that let the consummation of your prayer let the core of your prayer be your kingdom come. your influence the atmosphere of heaven the same principle that makes heaven heaven lord let it find expression in the earth not just on the ground but in the earth these mortal bodies of clay let the heavenly let that which has made celestial beings find its way to the earth realm hallelujah and find its way upon the inhabitants of the earth that way your will will be done. Your kingdom will come. Your glory will be revealed. Write this word down please. Transformation. Transformation. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Liberty. Not lawlessness, freedom, space. And he said, we all, wherever that place is, certain things happen there. And one of it is that we all, with open face, there is an unveiling. He says, we behold him as though looking at ourselves in a mirror. And then we begin to experience transformation. So we are the image of the earthly. But as we behold the heavenly, there is a transformation that begins to happen. And we begin to look like the heavenly. It says we are changed from glory. One dimension of glory to another. And the name given to that process is transformation. Transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ you can expound on it transformation is the process of alignment and conformity the process that process of alignment that process of conformity that makes a man become a manifestation and an expression of the heavenly that makes any man become an expression of Jesus the very Christ upon the earth transformation is the name given to the spiritual process the spiritual technology the system by which the earthly becomes the heavenly the system by which the weak become strong the system by which the canal becomes spiritual. It's called transformation. 
The desire of God, listen, the desire of God is that the fullness of his glory, his glory means his nature, his essence, the fullness of his power, the fullness of his kingdom, his influence, the fullness of his culture, his way of life, invade the earth and find expression in the earth exactly the way it finds expression in heaven. That is the heart cry of the Father. That the fullness of his culture, the fullness of his principles, his glory, his power, his wisdom, find expression in the earth as it is in the heavens. God is not satisfied just with the beauty and the the excellence of heaven. He wants to birth that same experience. That was the idea behind the formation of Eden. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his character. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his excellence. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of him. That's why he gave his exact dominion to man. Not an inferior type. His very dominion gave it to man and it still is his desire that his fullness will find expression if that happens in the earth then we will see the harvest of souls then we will see transformation and revival across individuals and territories then we will see the systems and the kingdoms of this world becoming experientially the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Then the ultimate plan of God will be fulfilled. That all things be headed up in Christ even as he submits to the Father. And so the strategy is that Jesus submits to the Father. And then the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit like a faithful bride submits to the authority of Jesus. And then through dominion and a demonstration of the reality of the kingdom, the church, the battle acts, will bring creation under its feet. And then all things, according to Colossians, becomes headed up in Christ. And he becomes the fullness of all things. This is the eternal plan of God. But for that to happen, his kingdom must come. Listen, please, get what I'm saying his kingdom, his influence, his glory. When that happens, then we will see a reality that is foreign to the earth finding expression because there are vessels that become containers of that reality. It is at that point we will see the eyes of the blind open by a technology that medicine cannot explain. It is at that point we will see men walk like gods upon the earth. Right? When they saw the apostles, they called them Zeus and Hermes. Greek gods because they operated laws that defied what man had known and the heart cry of the father is that his kingdom the fullness of his influence the fullness of his power and his glory will find expression until that happens God is still being misrepresented the fullness of who God is will only be understood when his kingdom comes. If the kingdom of God does not show up in his fullness. Certain dimensions of God will still remain vague and misunderstood. And that misconception will paint very wrong images about God. Are you following what I'm saying now? So the desire of God is that his kingdom will find expression in the earth. The desire of God is not just to take us to heaven. Please get this. The desires of God is not just for rapture to happen and the Antichrist judge. All those things are part of the processes that will lead to the culmination because he is God and his sovereignty will make his prophecy to come to pass. However, he said, Thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. With you I will beat down nations. And so as it is, we do not yet see all things according to Hebrews under his feet. Are you, are you understanding the teaching tonight? So God wants heaven to find expression. 
not just as a song, not just as a cliche, not just as a Christian suggestion, not just as a theological fact. He wants it here and now. Here and now, in this place, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns. In this place, here and now, we let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. So here and now, in this life and with this mortal body, he wants the image of the earthly to experience the fortest of the glories and the realities that dwell in heaven. But the limitation to that agenda is hidden in this word. Transformation or lack of it. The process by which the earthly becomes the heavenly. The process by which the treasure is transferred in earthen vessels. The treasure by which a celestial body becomes terrestrial. The process by which an ordinary biological being Comes literally a celestial being. When that happens, then we will bring our lives, our families, our territories, and the nations under the submission of the Christ. Listen, listen. What I am telling you is the reason why you are alive right now. If nobody has taught you this, then I want you to know that you do not even understand what we call Christianity or what we call the faith life. It is our participation in bringing this agenda to pass. Are we following now? And there is a way God wants to achieve this. I've taught it under the message, the emergence. You can get part three, but I just recap on it before we go to the main discussion tonight. I told you that there is a spiritual strategy to which cosmos will be subdued and will come under the governing influence of the king. The name of that strategy is the church. The church is not the coming together of people. Not just that. The church is not just a local assembly. The church is the name of the only spiritual strategy that is capable of birthing the purposes of God in its fullness. And so he says, Thou art Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And he says, Upon this rock, I will lift that strategy, that ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So the church is God's only chance and hope. Not because he is not mighty. He has chosen through his predeterminate counsel that it is only through the church that the multifaceted wisdom of the Christ will find expression. And so the agenda of the, of the Father is at the mercy of the understanding and the participation of the church. It's not at the mercy of the might of God. It's not at the mercy of the sovereignty of God. It's at the mercy of the equipping and the participation of the church. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the equipping that they enlighten the saints, that they build up the saints, that they orient the saints, that they they become instruments of birthing transformation in the saints so that the saints now transformed will do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Giving God space to find expression in the earth. This is what ministry is all about. Hallelujah. So the spirit of religion is the operation of darkness that masquerades itself as light and rather than expose
exposing the people to the light of God that equips them and prepares them as an army. It gives them a form of godliness. But the, the capacity, the power in it to birth that transformation is not there. So for such people, their testimony is ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So they learn. They have devotionals. Right? There's all kinds of Bible studies and prayer. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there are church services. However, those activities have been shrouded in religion. And so it does not sustain the ability to break out the light of God in them. And so after many years of being in church, after many years of being an elder, being a deacon, being a pastor, after many years of a church existing, that desire of God is unable to find expression. Because the average believer does not even know why they come to church. They come to church as a way of satisfying guilt. They come to church as a way of, of trying to dance to status quo. So that they can avoid the embarrassment of being told they are carnal. But it's much more than that. There is a heart cry. And those who will carry out this heart cry are the ones who become unkillable. They are the ones who... The Bible talks about them. It says, for them, those people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, don't touch these ones. It is for those kind of people that God would rather a nation die than for something to happen to them. They are the ones who are granted access to taste of the powers of the age to come realities that are not apportioned for our dispensation but on the strength of their yieldedness they can touch into certain things this is what happened to david it was not given to him to see the coronation of jesus it was not in his dispensation but his loyalty and allegiance and alignment opened him up to the mysteries of the spirit and he peeped into the coronation and he said the lord said to my lord sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The prophet Isaiah was not supposed to see the outpouring of the spirit that Joel would prophesy about. But because of his alignment, he tasted of an ability and a dimension that was not made for his dispensation. And he saw in a vision with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise me. Wherein I have said this is the rest and the refreshing. It was Joel that began to prophesy. All of these prophets, bits and pieces of their revelation into that ultimate agenda. And here we stand today, the prophesied generation. Here we stand today, the generation that all the prophets have spoken about. While they stood there, they saw you in the loins of prophecy. And here we are, majorly wasting our time and wallowing in the, in the futility of religion. Unable to partner with the Holy Spirit. To exert any tangible force in the spirit. As far as advancing his agenda is. We are caught up in the web of religion. Pastor, apostle, prophet. Caught up in the religion of meetings and conventions and conferences. Organizing ourselves and organizing God and his agenda out of our program. But Jesus said this. Jesus himself, not a prophet. He said, your desire should be to participate in any way to see his kingdom come. Meaning, if you are alive today hearing the sound of my voice and there is no active contribution from your life in birthing this agenda, you do not deserve to live. For he said, I shall not die. He didn't say live to roam around wallowing in religion. He said, I shall not die but leave to declare. Is God speaking to us? And so the way he will achieve this agenda is through the church. God wants to do this by revealing himself. Listen, the way that the agenda of God will find expression is when his glory is revealed first in this earthen vessel and then through this earthen vessel to the entire territory of human race. So the agenda is twofold. The manifestation of it. First, to you, the battle acts. He wants you to experience his glory for yourself in your life. 
that your life becomes an expression of his beauty and glory that your life becomes a validation to the fact that the kingdom is true and that the power of God exists and then out of that experience you begin to dispense the grace and the glory and the anointing and the power from your personal testimony as a contribution of your quota to see his kingdom come are we learning something say after me god desires that my life will host his presence god desires that my life my body my spirit will host his power god desires that i become an expression of the reality of god's ability here and now god desires that i become an expression of heaven and everything it carries here and now that's god's desire for you god's desire is bigger than giving you a wife don't reduce god god's desire is bigger than giving you a jeep the devil can give you a jeep god's desire is bigger than giving you crowds and giving you a church and giving you anointing god's desire is that the fullness of himself he wants you to become a conduit of his glory a conduit of his wisdom that word dogs are the full representation of all that is obtainable in him as far as our dispensation is given and defined by he wants it to find expression so the limitation of the agenda of god is the limitation of the ability of the saints to be transformed and not the limitation of his might the inability of the saints to contend for transformation has misrepresented god in the earth this is the tragedy in the earth right now he wants to reveal his wisdom and his glory and his power in your life first and then through your life please don't make that mistake to just think he just wants to reveal his glory through you no he wants to reveal himself in you then through you in you then through you in you then through you there are two limitations that the bible reveals to us two limitations that can frustrate the church from achieving this there are two limitations that the bible points to us that as much as we say we love God there are two limitations that will stop us from ultimately satisfying the desire of the father number one the first limitation is what the Bible calls the gates of hell the gates of hell Matthew 16 verse 18 the gates of hell the first limitation that the Bible openly points out to us that will be a challenge. It will be a standard that will attempt to resist this agenda. The gates of hell. He said, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell. Not demons, not principalities. The gates, the fullness of the arsenal of hell. What is the gates of hell? It means Satan and all the arsenals and the strategies that he has. Satan and all the arsenals and strategies that he has in an attempt to fight the advancement of the kingdom. That's what is called the gate of hell. The gate of hell represents Satan and all his gimmicks comes from the Greek word stratomai. It says do not be unaware of the devices that word is stratomai the strategies the skills the arsenals of satan there is a formula he uses for deception there is a formula he uses for witchcraft there is a formula he uses those formulas are like secret codes they are also called mysteries that is the principle with which he has brought nations for instance the bible tells us that satan uses the spirit of fear to put people in captivity he says and to deliver them through through fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage 
so the spiritual strategy to bring bondage is fear and like job what you fear now becomes your lot are you getting me so the bible says the gates of hell will rise you want to get a job there is a spiritual formula to frustrate you it is part of the arsenals of the gate of hell you want to get married there is a spiritual formula because your marriage has a root to bringing this agenda to pass since that there is a prophet that your womb should produce and satan will fight it it's not about you coming from east or west it's about something when he said the seed the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent satan started looking for everybody that looks like the seed he's still searching today hallelujah and he will use everything everything he will use everything your sensory perceptions your financial condition your family situation your academic condition every strategy satan is desperate more desperate than you can ever imagine to see that the agenda of god does not come let me tell you those who trivialize the reality of satan and his plot to fight to death the agenda of god are joking jesus himself said there will only be one limitation to the building of the church the gates of hell the spirit of religion came from satan activity without power came from satan because when the nation of israel in egypt wanted their exodus the moment they told moses we want to go moses told a m um, pharaoh what did pharaoh say occupy them is because they are free start giving them activities let them have meetings upon meetings seminars upon seminars and then they get busy and it convinces them that activity is equal to spirituality is god speaking to us tonight hallelujah the gates of hell they will haunt you i guarantee you when jesus went to fast satan followed him and stood somewhere watching jesus praying listening to his prayer points as he communicated with heaven for 40 days satan was nowhere else in the world roaming around he was waiting because it was a it was a a, a a defining moment for jesus as soon as jesus was done here comes satan his strategy again if you are really the son of god turn these stones to bread and he took him up a cliff and so on and so forth and the bible says when jesus overcame him what did he do he left him for a season is it in your bible he left him forever make no mistakes that because you think you are born again and filled with the holy spirit the devil will cross his leg and say wow promise so you are going to have a great ministry in the future well done you are a new creation in christ you are joking you are joking hallelujah the gates of hell they will rise brothers and sisters let me tell you the gates of hell will rise you are a brother you love god the gates of hell will rise through different strategies hallelujah look at samson the gates of hell rose up he was just moving and one demon entered a lion and the lion came to feed you think the lion just he was just strolling around and he said lion let's let's try wrestling you think that's what was happening to samson because satan was trying everywhere to find out about his strength so he used the strongest of the beasts and a lion came and samson tore it into pieces and satan said it's not there strategy change he used the philistines they caught him right and he, he used the jawbone of an ass satan said i missed it again another strategy delilah if i've used physical strength let me use emotional strength where is that beautiful delilah and delilah came and satan saw how vulnerable samson was he said we are making progress we are making progress he is delilah insisted and when she cut off his hair the judge of israel had been brought to his knees hell began to celebrate the gates of hell prevailing samson's eyes were plucked off samson's hair was cut off and i can imagine god saying come on samson you gave it cheap to delilah you would have asked me for a wife i would have given you a wife and delilah ran away 
But then what they did not know is that there is still a package in God to restore. Listen. God said, Samson, I know you have blown it. Your Lord now is dead. But you would, you would die in victory. Let all the people that represent evil in that land gather in one auditorium and the strength will be restored. And Samson said, Oh Lord, I know I've sinned against you. The, the Lord you have given me for my generation as a judge, I allowed a woman sleeping with Delilah. That's what some of you are doing as you are looking at me and laughing as if it does not matter. You carry your death. You are insulting Esau for taking porridge. And some of us have done what is cheaper than taking porridge. When you know what is upon your shoulder, you will package yourself and warn yourself from the spirit. Samson made Israel to suffer just because the strength and the salvation of Israel was upon him as a judge. But then, you will not say he didn't fulfill his assignment because he pushed. He said, oh God, let me die with them. And while he pushed, the Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Imagine the mass burial of evil. All the evil men gathered together with their idol and he crushed them into pieces and died with them. Every man that showed up was given a piece of this assignment and they ran with it. They didn't do it part time. They spent their life doing it. When Jezebel was threatening the prophets of God, Elijah the Tishbite arose, a fiery prophet who frustrated the council of darkness and left. And now, probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, who knows, one woman was crying in slave trade and said, Oh Lord, I may die, but let this little child of mine exalt your name and that person became your ancestor became your grandfather became your father and now it is you that woman's prayer who died in the slave trade that lord i saw a vision that africa must be saved that's you sitting down roaming around and god is saying do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy how we limit him how we limit him The gates of hell. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Let's hurry up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, but once again, the gates of hell. Satan personally took it as a responsibility. Satan told all the demons, stand. This Paul, I've noticed this guy is, I mean, this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom. I will hinder him by myself. Listen, when you see people being challenged and confronted, shut your mouth. It's because they have, many of you have not received any confrontation. You think it's just because you are in Christ. It's because you have not done anything striking enough. At least start praying. Pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens. That's the night somebody will appear to you and say, let me warn you. Your father obeyed us. Your mother obeyed us. Take care and leave you wake up in the morning and say what happened i'm praying and i'm seeing somebody appear and you think he's backsliding is because fire did something in the spirit the gates of hell let me tell you there are giants in every mountain don't let any man fool you mm. i pity any man of god that wants ministry wants crowd wants miracle and will not pray you are roaming around doing geo or doing president you will die like a chicken i tell you 
See, let me tell you. Though if you know how desperate Satan is to destroy your life, Satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going. That's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of God. Because for one month now, you have not prayed, some of you. And you have traveled and gone everywhere. And yet nothing happened. Just a Kai. It's just because I'm in Christ. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. A lady prayed in the night brothers and sisters prayed in the night physically in the morning her uncle called her and said what did you do her physical uncle alive what did you do i can't remember he said be careful you don't know who you are trying let me tell you gates will not open like that you want to bring breakthrough you want barrenness to stop in your family you want oppression to stop the cause of poverty to stop all this all this tea christianity will only the devil will encourage you to keep doing it but let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell oh yes i tell you reaction from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of jesus is not there it's a sign that something you are doing is striking a chord how many of you have finished praying and you find out that your loved ones start insulting you and there is fight in the house it's when you finish praying the day you don't pray there's joy and peace and love even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you but you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop as you step out they say look i've been warning you and you are saying what did i do it's not the person the gates of hell attempting to stop you You tell that man, no, I won't sleep with you. I'm going somewhere and see what happens. That's the day somebody will come and tell you, we don't do it like this in Nigeria. Better bend or become a fool. And you sit down and say, truly, Satan is threatened by every communication of zeal towards your destiny. I know what cares Satan. I found out early in life. The moment you say, I am taking a step, I tell you, Satan fears you. It's not everybody Satan is afraid of. There are men who have determined when you worship God and you say, Lord, in life and in death, Satan says, what do I do with this person? Whether you pray or not, things are working well. I guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you. A day will come, God will wake and say, Mr. Man, there are still other sinners getting born again. Your tenure of, of cheap playing Christianity has been expired. I said, it doesn't really matter. Oh God, I thank you. I love you. You're my king. You died. You've done everything. You will, you will waste like a chicken. Especially, take what I'm saying serious. I'm not playing games. There is the gate of hell. It will meet you on the road to your job. It will meet you when you're about to give birth. One of our ladies just put to bed. Annie worshipped him. Bouncing baby boy. Hallelujah. At a point they were talking stories here and there. And she said she had a dream. And she saw me. I thank God for using my face as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit. No, I say it with, with all you. If you see me in your dream. Before this, hear what I'm saying. Before you carry newspaper around and say you are, you are programming all of that. Let me tell you, some of you are not serious with your destiny. Even you, you know you are not serious. That's why the gate of hell will pass you. You say, "What of me?" They say, "No, no, no. You are not an issue. There is somebody we are looking for." Listen, may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you. You would think it's spiritual growth. But it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit. You are not striking any chord. When the devil wants to destroy your parents, he comes freely. No resistance whatsoever. You snore in demons. Come in, do what they do. And, they, and they, they come out and you wake up. I refuse my life to be like that. For as long as I am alive, the devil will know that I love the Lord and I will stake my life to see his kingdom come. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Do you know there are some of you is the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family? Make no mistakes about it. They are criticizing you and you don't know why. It's a reaction. Don't stop. That's the time to stay. After they do all of that, you find a corner. You know how kings reign. Come on. You know how they reign. Don't stand outside behaving like a fool. You lock yourself. Manta protokosaya. Fire is rising everywhere in the spirit. And the gates of hell are saying, here he comes again. May they know your name. He said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Joshua Selman I know. They will know you and know your tongues. Once they hear it, they say, here he comes. Shekete katababa. Manta protokaya. Tongues that have grown with pain. Tongues that have grown with sacrifice. The gates of hell will fight anything they can fight in your life. Please be aware of it. You may be as beautiful as the sun. You will watch men pass you like this. That's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes. Hallelujah. One day in my life, fridge fell on my head. The devil wanted to destroy my life. Yet, by the mercy of God, I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games. That's why, if listen, when the devil was doing that, he saw the word I'm giving you. It, it's not just because of Joshua Selman. When they looked at the womb of her that was with child, they said they saw two nations, not two people. There are some of you, the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you is what you represent. Backslide and see how the devil just leaves you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. If you travel up and down and come back safe, it's not luck. There is a law of life. If you don't know it, you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life. Tomorrow we are going to a bomb show. Praise the Lord. To go and invade and set fire. Is fire all the way, brothers and sisters. Mm. So break every chain. Break every chain. May your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory. That when you show up, come on, man, de katalabakaya. Look, there are some of you. The reason why God will insist that you marry somebody is because He's taking Himself to that family. He packaged Himself to you and He's saying, Go there. And you enter that family and you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say, For introduction, welcome note. Manta Pratosketa Emprotoskete Kelebata Zeketele Kotopa Lift up your heads All ye gates That's introduction But why has your life Not passed this kind of threat To the gates of hell Hallelujah Moses threatened the devil when he died, Satan took his body, his dead body. They were fighting over his dead body. Satan said, he's dead. I still want it. Because if he resurrects, i I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens. The dead body of a man. Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life. But the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already seeing you are not blind behold man takatayabata I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy, the word power there is the word exousia authority 
I give it to you Joshua Selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because Satan was asleep there is a force we know where we do it when the prayer band comes together on Tuesday as they lift their voice something is happening and while you are there in your room some chains just break and you say let me go for koinonia today and something wants to keep you but God will say come 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 listen please let me submit to you in all sincerity if your prayer life is dead use this meeting to jack it back to life i'm not playing games this is not an issue of i'm calling to the ministry of prayer nobody is called into any ministry of prayer i say everybody is called into the ministry that will make jesus come the advancement of the kingdom he didn't tell some let me teach you how to pray the rest go fishing he was talking to everybody you see the importance of prayer if you are not told this let me tell you what i'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication if i don't give you a reason to pray you will never pray all these lazy things people do around and let me tell you something a big secret see explore the mystery of night prayers we'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that mystery of night prayers when all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshiping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of Jesus remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night you carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level you carry your Bible you carry your recorder this is what I do this is what I do I put heavy worship for hours and while that is happening I'm lying down flat with notebooks Oh Lord, this land is opening up. God said, don't go anywhere. Stay in one place. He said, thank you Jesus for saving me. I would have made a fool out of myself. And God says, I want to do more son. You are limiting me. You are limiting me. Expand your capacity. Thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia, but it's only little. And I say, Lord, supply the grace. And that heavy Shekinah comes. I lie down there. I sleep and I wake up. I sleep and I wake up. The body is tired. I say, sleep there. You are not going anywhere. Not what you do on your bed. You lie down, then you put earphone and you sleep off. That is, is a basic level of spiritual growth. It's spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the great will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that will open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means. It's a double confirmation. So in case anything happens and I didn't pray. Satan will still not use it as a yardstick. Because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life. By any means. Whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness. That scripture still fortifies me. While God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power that's what you see if you believe the by any means part that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day you two you don't know what happened right never brought light or something that's the power of god walking don't don't just laugh come on you know i will talk to you right 
or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means keeping you I want you to realize that you truly have authority now whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this it's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it are you getting me whether or not you refuse it it does not mean I did not give you he said I give you authority let's hurry up the second limitation that the Bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray the first limitation is the gates of hell Satan but the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind the absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression now let me explain something very quickly I want to just correct something very very quickly please look up I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the students the thing was just nailing them and uh, God, they were saying it's not like I don't agree with you but let it just settle down what we call the tripartite nature of man I want to teach you something please look up people have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books let me have three people I want to correct something now please hallelujah watch this just stand face you stand in the middle you are wearing white God bless you watch this look at this this is what you have been taught now I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man but I want to teach you something that will really liberate you otherwise you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about what I'm going to teach is very powerful now this is what we have taught people this is man number one spirit this is man same man number two soul is that not true this is man number three body this is what you have taught the Bible never teaches this one this is nonsense that's religion that brought up that <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying it is true that man is a tripartite being but the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals like father son and Holy Spirit uh -uh. it's in the similitude of that but watch this this is the part I want to explain to you what is the soul of man look up if you don't understand this forget transformation forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God what exactly is the soul of man it is true that the Bible says that you'll be kept spirit soul and body right but what is the soul of man is what I'm saying is can you separate the spirit of man to say this is spirit you this is soul stand here this is body can that happen look at me when a man dies how many objects or entities are separate two is that not true whatever you call it whether spirit or soul we're about to find out but whatever let's call it x x comes out and the body is lying down there correct is that true we're about to get the name of x now listen <laughs> he said why no one say why there's no why in the equation are you are you following what i'm saying now if you don't understand this you will be confused which part relates to God which part should change which part goes to heaven and there is that's to tell you believers are not even growing because if you are growing you must meet this question on the way are you getting what I'm saying what is the soul look up we teach that man is a spirit he has a soul he lives in a body very correct it's only that we don't think over what we are saying Joshua Selman listen Joshua Selman is a person he has a handkerchief he lives in a room how many assuming this room is a living thing how many living things do we have are you getting what I'm saying now what you call the soul please get this never forget what I'm about to teach you now what you call the soul listen is the spirit of man 
but connected to his will, emotions, and intellect. The will, emotion, and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Bible says man is a spirit, it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from God, right? But the spirit like that, if the spirit just comes to the body, there will still not be interaction because of law of territory. Go and get my message, mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territories. That's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth. They need material bodies. Is that true? Because of the law of territory. So the spirit as it were is unable to find expression physical in the body until a dividing line. Are you getting what I'm saying now? An attachment that helps the spirit to communicate with this container called the body. And that attachment is the mind composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul you are right when you say man is a spirit you are right but i'm telling you the dynamics of the difference because when you get born again this guy watch this when you get born again in in his original sense your spirit man is united with christ it experiences the fullness of salvation immediately immediately oneness so way are you getting my point the so way life implanted here but that so way life has not found expression in this body that so way life has not permeated these faculties that was given to you that is why although you are born again you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke the memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line the will emotion and intellect has not been transformed are you getting what i'm saying so the bible puts it this way first peter chapter 1 verse 9 first peter chapter 1 verse 9 you need to understand this herbalists understand this those who do astral travel right what they call them Harry Krishna, or all this world relief they understand this very well it's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught everybody read want to read the word end there is the culmination of your faith receiving the culmination of your faith what is it this is talking to believers what is the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul is when your will your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit the degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with God are you understanding what I'm saying so watch this all authority has been given so we believe the word of God that means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of Jesus that means that if the mind of Christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially nothing will be impossible for you again because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned are you getting what i'm saying are we following what i'm saying but this is usually the problem watch this all power is here the body is a puppet is ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to are you getting what i'm saying now this is all the power of god but this is the level of access so that power can barely find expression to the body so all that the body executes are you getting what i'm saying is just a little and a fraction 
of the capacity of what is resident there. But because human beings look at the body, and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read. Oh, sick bodies, you can be healed. Blind, you will be healed. And your spirit man is saying, yes, we have the power, don't fear. But because you do not have that vision of your soul, the transformation, what makes the earthly heavenly? Are you getting my message now? That very factor. I now come to him on wheelchair. Is it true that all authority has been given? Yes. And I say, stand up. And he can't stand up. He sits back down. I say, look, ginger your feet. Let's try it again. Watch this. Stand up. And nothing happens. And at the end of it, this guy says, your Jesus is a liar. What happened? He was misrepresented. You just misrepresented Jesus Christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves. Do you agree with me? Now, I am telling you that God is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation. As mighty as he is on the throne, he is at the mercy. Give me space. And then, while you are struggling, a man like Benny Hinn comes and he just stands and says holy if you are on a wheelchair stand up stand up and he stands up and he's walking what happened more jesus than you no no there is a greater conformity to the image of the christ that has made him his body now responds in greater measure are you getting what i'm saying so it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again your job is to bring that mind that contains your will emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul right so when we say salvation of the soul you're not really doing anything per se although we generally say spirit man are you getting my point but what we really mean i'm breaking the dynamics for you is that attachment to your spirit man call your will emotion and intellect that is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of god find expression because he that is joined to christ is one spirit your spirit man has been joined to christ except you don't believe the bible but that christ cannot show up on the scene because your mind is a limitation so i come as a preacher and i say in the name of jesus darkness flee and although the spirit is willing but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of God through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak. So I look at somebody oppressed and I say in the name of Jesus Christ, be free and nothing happens. When nothing happens over a long time, the devil now comes and says, why don't you try me? You have tried the rest. Jesus being part of the rest. And you say, truly, let's go to the village. We have tried man of god i appreciate you i know god is using you mightily but the emergency requires another force to come into attention and the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties see this is the same thing that happens when demons come watch this watch this watch this watch this let me teach you something now watch this a man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the holy spirit seeks to attach himself that's called demon possession are you getting me the will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything this man can be born again demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties so between the spirit and the body there is an interruption are you getting what I'm saying now? So he can be born again, yet anger is still killing him. He can be a man of God, yet he's still masturbating. And he's praying in tongues. Genuine tongues, real tongues. And you are saying, Kai, this man of God is fake. No, he's not fake. Something is happening in the soul realm. The salvation of his soul has not been perfected. So the Bible says it this way. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through god are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ listen 
so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to enoch enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime this his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality you see the concept of immortality that many preachers people like kobus great man i love and honor he's going to be with the lord he caught the revelation of immortality but not the dynamics of its manifestation so he knew from the word of god that if immortality is at work in your life the first thing that happens is you stop aging at once you stop aging that's a sign that immortality is at work but it so happens that immortality is not an impartation the fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body and our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation so god just takes your spirit and your body lies the moment the trumpet shows up the law of immortality is what will make your body that's the law of resurrection that's what makes a seed to arise again are we getting blessed bless you guys I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let's rush. Help us Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One. Who are the day? Mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh Israel, I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministries? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen. I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life. I've never seen it before. Never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I knew to do. And one day, there was a lady who came from somewhere. And I prayed, you know, we bought food for her. And then she, I prayed for her. She got born again. And I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just by faith. And I just laid my hands. And it was as if I was dreaming. I just saw somebody moving back. I had barely touched her. And that's how she just went on the floor. Ah! I said, oh God, what, what is this good news that I'm seeing? So be excited when you begin to see. Don't just be childish about it. That's Because some of you, once you see that, you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small. So that the anointing will enter fast. You now go and look for small, small ladies and try to throw them. I remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of god will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you not fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of god is bigger than that thing god will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him so just do and let's continue but it doesn't mean god you are slowing down your progress some of you are doing it abby praise the lord and so from that time i began to see i will never forget when i saw one dimension of the operation of the holy spirit in my life i think it was our first crusade punching crusade we usually have pastors conference where we have some time with the pastors teach them that was in 2006 and then we we'll have like um we we'll just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them so i was in a church and i gave a word of knowledge 
when I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually, gradually, gradually. Hallelujah. Let me use medical terms. Have you seen times when medical people, a woman wants to give birth, right? And they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough. Is that true? Is there a baby? Yes. Does he want to come out? Yes. Why is he not coming out? The mother, right? And sometimes they have to do all kinds of things. Worse come to worse when nothing is wrong. They just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out. Pray that God will not have to do CS for you for this destiny thing to come out by force. As soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the Spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more. So, the transformation that has, our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the word of God. So, more of heaven can find expression to our lives. But compared to where God wants to take, we are still so slow. This is why we must continue contending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we celebrate men of God. We don't just celebrate the men. We celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake. Not just shake in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketri. She's still alive till today. When that woman is coming for a crusade, immediately they spot her car. That's how healings and deliverance happen. I was shocked. I didn't know there's such a person in the earth. Ah! The day I saw that, I said, my goodness. Ah, this is heaven. This is what we're saying. This woman stepped into the crusade ground. And my goodness, the kind of miracles. I'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not. You are just afraid of the pastor. So you say yes. Provable miracle. Wounds that will close right away. Not magic. Right away. Wounds closing. I said, my goodness, oh God. So you still have men and women. And ladies, do you know you have an advantage over men? Because of your configuration. Your configuration was designed in the similitude of the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized. Because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. A transformed mind. I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come on. And has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion and intellect that has come into agreement. You no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one, transformation is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says, walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Work it out. 
the work out there it says wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not in my presence only but now much more in my absence comma work out your what your own salvation as a matter of urgency what is the work there is the name given to your participation your cooperation with the holy spirit in your fasting you are working it out i'll be sharing with us in your prayer and all the points i'm about to give you here you are working it out romans chapter 13 verse 14 the bible gives it an interesting picture it says put on the lord jesus christ where it's like a cloth put on put ye on the lord jesus christ and what by so doing make no provision for the flesh that means there will be space for the flesh until you put on that put on the transformation is like wearing a new garment Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit? Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life that means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life not how much you carry but how much will find expression so you can carry God as we all believe but you never see that God show up in your life in my life Lord, be glorified. Will you be glorified in my life? Lord, be glorified today. Can you sing that song? Lord, in my life, he my life be glorified be glorified in my life hallelujah so what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made you too small in my mind. Ah, how true. Oh Lord, we really should cry for forgiveness. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie. That you were unable to help me. But today, right in this place. But now, oh Lord. I see my wrong Heal my heart And show yourself strong Show yourself in my life And in my heart And with my song Oh Lord Be 
Oh, that's the song you must sing. That's the song of transformation. Be magnified. Break the walls. Break the boundaries. Be magnified. Oh Lord. Be magnified. Oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can't do. Hey, oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. St. Patrick's, a great man that lived, a man had died, brothers and sisters, six months. He was dead. And St. Patrick's came and said, where is the grave? True story. When they showed the grave, he signed his signature on it. St. Patrick. He said, dig it. They brought the man out alive. In this earth, men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods. I shared with you about ancient, I study a lot about revivals. I was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway. There was no money to buy another one. He held it and drew it and completed it. Hi. Transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly. Catherine Kuhlman, she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating. She didn't realize she had left the stage. Apostle Babalola, for those of you who know, the founder of CAC, that man preached to a point he was levitating and going. They held him and brought him back. E.W. Kenyon, men who allowed the possibilities of God. You don't die less than 70 in his church. He will raise you back to life. One time a man had a, a, an accident. A car climbed his legs, broke his bones. And all E.W. Kenyon did was to look at him. Because he sees through his eyes. And he looked at him, allowing heaven to pass through your eyes. And the bones started making noise. We say it today like mystics. But men, the Bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? imagine brothers and sisters elijah he was talking with god on the mountain and they came to interrupt him he called fire your atmosphere opened fire we came consumed them and they went back physically daniel entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled joshua told the son to stand still there is something we are missing in our generation and Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind. Imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space. And see the little things that trickles of his presence. That happen during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish... I wish that's the reason why God transports men from region to region he's transporting himself through them tomorrow we are going to Obama shop and God is going there through the decree we have given him he expects to do great things but he wants to do more unfortunately Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants so probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die but I may not be able to raise him and I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You'll be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul, took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. 
just shook himself. The guys, please, I will talk to you later on. Paul said, I am in the straight between. I'm standing. The line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. That's where I am. I'm choosing to go or to stay. But I'll stay because it's profitable for you. Can you imagine a man like that? John, his mind was so aligned. They threw him in boiling pot. And nothing happened. But today when they shoot you, you will die at once. Let me finish up so we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you. Permit this mind. 2 verse 5. Let this mind. Koinonia. God wants to find expression in Zaria. God wants to find expression in your family. Give him space. Don't limit the mighty one. He is mighty but limited. Mighty but limited. Mighty but limited through you. What is your challenge? Write it. That means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation. To contend for transformation and alignment. So as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth. That's your singular challenge. That's your singular task. Contend for transformation. Give God space through your life. My goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me that there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously. I look forward to a time when there will be accidents and I will just come and God will say thank you. I've always wanted to raise them but I need an access point. Joshua Selman be there. Hey. See, the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say you shall say be healed. Just take me near that person. And he will be healed. God wants to go to your home. But he wants to travel through you. Transformation. The hallmark of transformation. Is oneness with God. Unity. The hallmark of transformation. Is where your mind. Literally. Becomes the mind of Christ. Your mind. Becomes. A full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of God are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of Christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of Christ give him space give him space very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamic? So how are you changed? What's, what's, what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly? Number one, the first key to transformation is a life of prayer. The first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly. Praying in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, that transformation is happening. Whether you know it or not. That's why I encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak. Join the prayer department for one month. So that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life. Pray in the night. Pray in the day. Separate days for prayers. Prayer in the spirit is one of God's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly. It's one of the system through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself. Prayer is like molting. The way reptiles, snakes, molt. You, see, you know what happens when they want to expand, right? They come out of their current shell. It's a difficult process. It's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands. And they have to crawl through. And when they come out, you now see the cocoon. And the snake is big.
before it now crystallizes that's how you grow so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you're standing you're seeing people shouting everywhere and you're seeing the power of god moving and you're surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounters for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i won't explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 first corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number two romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of god right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call on to me and i will answer and show the great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down and study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type I have commanded. And if you do that, your light will break forth like the morning. And your health will come speedily. James chapter 5 verse 16. The fervent, not joking and trivial prayer. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. Amplified says, is dynamic in its working. Say katala so when you pray when you pray in the spirit you are enlarging your capacity you see why we pray you see why we believe in the ministry of prayer it's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast we are not trying to add to what Jesus has done we are opening up to receive all that he has brought number two the second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word so here we have the ministry of prayer and then insight and revelation from the word notice i didn't just say the word of god it's for a reason because if i say the word of god many of us have been reading bible but the insight and the revelation the illumination you get from the word of god and then in addition to that our obedience to the word of god is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us listen listen the word of god is like a bag that carries treasures your obedience to the principles of the word 
opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside you know how granite is it's in a shell that's principally how the word of god is when you act your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you so it's not enough to just get insight and revelation you must be willing to obey to the latter i wrote something here that is interesting revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion revelation when you have revelation insight in the bible and you do not have the willingness to obey it you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion A few scriptures mm. proverbs 24 verse 30 let's look at it very quickly we'll look at three scriptures proverbs 24 verse 30 and then acts chapter 8 29 to 30 proverbs 24 verse 30 hallelujah it says 24 verse what 30 i think i may have made a mistake Okay, let's go to Acts 8 verse 29 to 30. While I look that up. Acts 8. It was a story. The story of the utopian Enoch. Watch this. That guy could not experience God in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding. And when the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join yourself to the chariot 30. And Philip ran Peter to him and had him read prophet Isaiah and said what? Understandest what thou readest? Not just that you are reading it. Do you understand? It's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures. Do you understand? Understanding, illumination, insight. Job chapter 22 verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth The last scripture, John chapter 1 verse 12. This is the one that blew my mind. The Bible says, As many as received him. Who is the him? The word. But as many, not everybody will receive the word. Many will read the word. Many will admire the word. But very few will receive it. He said, but as many as received that word. That word gives them power to become. Power to become power to become when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly number three the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship a life of intense worship intense worship bible says do not be drunk with wine wearing in excess he said but ye be filled with the holy ghost speaking to yourself in psalms hymns spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the lord let me tell you something about worship i've studied it very well worship brings the manifest presence of god to your life and your territory worship is a magnet there are three levels of god's presence there is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time there is what i call his emmanuel dimension that when two people are gathered in a place he's there in their midst God with us but there is his Shekinah his manifested presence that dimension is invoked in worship second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 let's hurry up 
Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. Second Chronicles 5. It says, And also the Levites, which were singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haman, of Jedutun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and pastries and psalms, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, worshipping and sounding trumpets. Next verse. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For the Lord is good, for his mercy endured forever. That what happened? The house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. Next verse. The Shekinah of God came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud. He said, For the glory of the Lord had filled the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of God comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerful in the anointing and the glory of God that the cloud the glory of the Lord. Let me tell you, when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life, you won't even be able to stand up. That Shekinah. Sicknesses will melt away. Infirmities will go away. The majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you. Maintain a life of worship. Put worship songs in your phones. Remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities. Come and meet the worship team. Let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you. Just lie down in your room. You may be sleeping normally, but let the songs just play. Sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing. No words to them. And you are just soaking. And after a while, the Shekinah of God, like a hand resting upon eggs. Remember what I said about the hand. A hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek. How much more the glory of God when it rests upon you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16 verse 25. The Bible tells us that Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison. And the Bible says they prayed and they sang. They sang praises to God. And the prisoners had them. He had them. Oh my God. That's why we worship a lot in Koinonia. It's the secret of the presence. It's the secret. Look at every man that walks in the anointing. Every man that walks in the miraculous. Benny Hinn will worship for hours. Dr. Paul Enche would worship for hours. Men who know God. Men who carry the anointing. Catherine Kuhlman. All these great people. They would sing hymns and worship for hours. And when the presence rests, wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves. Your job is to get God to the scene and step out. Our worship team, all of them have been trained to understand. The assignment of Koinonia worship team is not to entertain Koinonia. The very assignment of Koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of God finds expression. That's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. You are good. You are good. And your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good. And your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. 
Let's sing it one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of God who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no I'm anointed if not because of condition don't I have a better revelation than Kenny and God keeps you there say stay there I just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is God bless you God lift you God anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance I just finished pieces in the book of Ephesians and you remain there for many years Is God speaking to us? Never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness. Lord, this is the level of grace that you have given me. I am happy. I am proud of it. Lord, you have given me the anointing to clean chairs. I know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations. But in this season, my assignment is to clean chairs. I receive the grace to do it faithfully. Not just to clean chairs and say, Kai, oh God if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 i just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward I will make thee ruler over many things. When you are promoted in the kingdom, many things happen to you. One, the anointing upon your life is multiplied. Number two, your operation becomes easy. Number three, God expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice. It's a product of faithfulness. You have been faithful over a few things. I gave you a teaching anointing and I did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of God why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient I'm coming I'm not ashamed to say God is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me I will teach I will make Bible study notes and God is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the Spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have it's a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations 
and then he says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what I'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me 
will uphold me to the end I will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end I will not be hallelujah years ago I had a conversation we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle I've come for koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and I said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and I think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous I say I'm not dangerous the laws of God are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of God whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what I'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah I challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust God to go back and say Lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now I want to show you a very dangerous scripture that God opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if God does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes God to open your eyes. Psalm 77. Turn there. Let me show you something. Psalm 77 and verse 19. Psalm 77 verse 19. Give us from Amplified if it's possible. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Alpha and Omega, my trust is in you. I am that I am, my trust is in you. Tonight I put them on you. My trust is in you. It says, Your way in delivering your people was through the sea. Listen carefully. The same sea that was an obstacle, he said their way of escape was inside that water, inside that trouble. He says, and your path through the great waters. How can you be in trouble and God says in that trouble, that's where your answer is. But it takes your eyes to see it. God hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it. He says your way of delivering your people was through the sea. The same sea is said that your path through the water, yet you pass through it and cover it, and nobody can trace your footsteps. This one give us King James again. It will take revelation for you to know how can I look at a water challenges and great waters. He said, Thy way is in the sea. In that rent challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known 
God, what kind of God are you? You do something and cover it so no man can just look and say, ah, I... But when he opens your eyes, all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part. I never knew. And all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the Egyptians will think and God will cover it and say, I don't open it for everybody. It is a way, but not for everybody. Are we together? These are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing. Sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense. Shout Jesus, keep quiet. It does, you will try it and it won't work. It's a mystery. There is a way in it. There is a pathway that when God opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom, then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them. God is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying, the answer is already within your environment. All it takes is for your eyes to see. Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord Many of you have come from several places. You have made sacrifices. Please don't come here wasting your time. And don't come here wondering. Let's see what God will do. Already I can answer you. You won't get anything. Already. Let me, let me be honest with you. Because God is not a magician. But there are people that come here determined. And say Lord I have seen you in this place. I can't go back this way. That something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have 
excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. that's a part of this song i like though we are few there are witnesses there are people who have been healed there are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth. Testifiers of his faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again. And this is the song. It is our confidence in God and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of God and access to the ways of God we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet
begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Go ahead. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Lord, grant me the grace to be faithful. Grant me the grace to stay as you lift me. Grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life. Grant me the grace. Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we are going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? You will be attended to. So, hold on. Before I ask the people to come, you don't have to. Just cooperate with the ushers. If they need you to do anything, just, just, it's a temporary inconvenience. We're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please hold on. Let's, let's not be distracted. Those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service. It's not just limited to healing, but we're going to pray for the sick now. Now, we're going to do this very fast. And um, please, those that will be ministering, let's, let's do it very fast. It's not in how long... Listen, let me tell you something about the anointing. It's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency. Just a touch is enough for the anointing. The same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal 
we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of Jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of God who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if I were you I'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick God bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. the honor yes Lord we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Saying you deserve the glory, say you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and words as we praise. As we praise oh, yes, you deserve the glory. Why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we pray your holy name give you your the miracle there is no one no one else that can touch me like you do they can heal me say there is You are great. You do miracles. 
and say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus Set. Every song shall be broken. You will the victor's run. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalakatopa Shabren Negadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of god lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray Let your fire fall upon my life. Let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies.
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What's yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata, under any kind of demonic siege, at the count of three, that horn, that symbol of authority that has tied your family, that has tied your life, it is uprooted. One, two, three. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Pako Seketo Shatariata, Embreke Teke Toka Sata, Shabeke Teleke Tabata. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, anyone here whose life is under siege, be delivered now. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness. But then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of Jesus ah, I tell you all I see is just fire that's what I'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Where? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. You truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, sir. You heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing a new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Eleven people. Eleven people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters. Stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold i declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back. Overflow one, two, three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
délai. Alléluia. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? From Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Is taken from my life. Is taken from my life. Forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. From, hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. 
no don't I, if, if i pray most of you is not it's not that word you are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of jesus i'm i'm just praying for you as i'm touching you, you see let me let me tell you something brothers and sisters you see this touch you see this touch just this touch you see there is power in it it's just that we are very carnal people do you understand after service you can hug me and jump on me but now what is on me is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 no. i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you i don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the lord is showing me something help is coming i'm seeing help is coming that's what the spirit of god is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when god says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming i'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of jesus christ the lord is saying i should prophesy to someone it won't read june it won't read june this is what god is saying i don't even know what i'm saying listen god gave you a word god is saying you will not enter june without that miracle happening and in the name of jesus christ whoever that person is i release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of jesus christ let there be a performance i'm seeing i'm seeing a young man that came here 
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentleman it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing I stretch my hands now by the Spirit in the name of jesus christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people i'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit this is this is it, like a token of that grace that call lord in the name of jesus christ i pray now everywhere in this congregation and outside if you are called into this ministry i declare you may not look like it but i release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself Please help them. Eleven years, no child, madam. Yes. How long? Seven years. Seven years. Yes. Eighteen years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam. Eighteen years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Yes. You. Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been barren too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, it's someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child, you were even rejoicing, and you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes. The doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage, not even in tw in 2000 and in 2014 child, uh, that's what i'm saying you had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach yes the baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach yes sir. god is going to give you a child Amen. 
my dear look at me this lady the mercy of god needs to speak for you you, you love jesus you love jesus i'll pray for you but you are not in need of child what you need is mercy the mercy of god many of us don't know what the mercy of god is the mercy of god is not for sinners the mercy of god is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you so when we say mercy it's not just because you have to be a sinner there are certain dimensions of god that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come i want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of jesus christ please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for i, I love men i respect husbands but many husbands don't love jesus they don't know jesus after their wives return like this and say my husband we just went for a program they don't know what program and they cancel out all of these things it takes two to agree are we together in the name of jesus christ madam put your hand in your stomach i take away this demonic thing let it go now in the name of jesus it disappears madam i pray for you the lord opens your womb in the name of jesus madam by the grace of god you carry your child in the name of jesus christ I remove every growth from your stomach in the name of Jesus I declare that you return with your miracle madam look at me God is going to use you Amen. you are not just going to give birth to a child the hand of God is on your life it doesn't look like it but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God you will love God and serve him and with this miracle God is going to give you yes. every other woman you pray for yes, over sir. the issue of the fruit of the womb Amen, you will sir. see that God will open Amen. up your stomach in the name of Jesus Christ father you will arise and have mercy upon this my precious sister in the name of Jesus the voice of accusation that speaks against you I silence it by the mystery of the blood now go and have your child it's over in the name of Jesus Christ it's over my dear look at me go and prepare you have a child now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace of God speak for you madam I pray for you help her please it's over right now carry your child in Jesus name please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray stretch your hands in one minute you for yourself madam okay in the name of jesus christ it's all right madam no problem in the name of jesus christ i pray um you are trusting god for a child in the name of jesus christ somebody's sister is going to have twins hold on hold on hold on the power of god will come on that person now as i'm speaking for the sake of your sister carrying twins this is twins the lord himself hmm. there's one more person left i'm hearing the voice of children babies crying when it stops then i know that it's over i'm still hold on i'm still hearing it there is still one more person family i'm like i'm hearing the voice of children lord in the name of jesus wherever that family is i pray that you locate them right now by the spirit of the living god you locate them right now you locate them right now i'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of jesus 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 stretch your hands and let's pray Please begin to pray in one minute and say father whatever i have dropped here just keep her there i'll pray for her that's all right begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony in the name of jesus i'm laying hands here and i'm agreeing with you impossible situations 
Mabrakatosa dia shana hasana malakatosh. Rekete kete kebara hasosia. Embrakato shala barakatos kade brende kete kalatosiata. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Mabreza kado jane kelando safria hasabadash. Ingredo zede kosha barakatos ke adabalash. Please pray. Lord, turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let them say among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. We sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy. Lord, I bow my knees to you and I cry, visit your people. 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 Sheketo kato sana malikatos, embra kato skala baru sabari agatas. Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there and the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request I declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of jesus christ every impossible situation represented here i cry to the god who is the god of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of jesus christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of jesus by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be miracles in jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of jesus christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes I have seen the grace and the glory of God and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have walked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of jesus christ you have handled some level of finances before but i shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of jesus christ you have experienced favor before but i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare a new order of favor you have had god before but i program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of god i pray for everyone here inside and outside the mantle that causes men to be honorable may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ listen this ministry has never gone up and come down never not once it keeps going from glory to glory i declare let that be the definition of your life from today spiritually financially academically for those who are students i decree and declare the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you anyone here trusting god for a job a noble job i stretch my hands between now and next miracle service return with your testimony in the name of jesus christ and anyone here due for promotion i decree and declare by the finger of god step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you i found the calls of your prayer life i found the calls of your spiritual life i found the calls of your word life this is a prayer many people don't desire i pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger i say it again a baptism of spiritual hunger that the lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things every kind of arrival mentality every kind of spiritual complacency where there is no in there is no desire to press for the deeper things of god satisfied by the little results here and there i declare that the lord plants a fresh hunger the hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of jesus christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray i pray for you now in the name of jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food i cause it from your life in the name of jesus christ and finally i pray for you in this strange season where god is lifting men and changing their stories as i'm praying for you i'm praying this one for myself too in the name of jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of god in the name of jesus christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of god here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a christian background a number of you love jesus christ but you are saying man of god i have never truly made a commitment for jesus i have i've seen people do all this but tonight i want to make that decision some of you are saying man of god i love jesus but i need a renewal in my life i just need a fresh touch i know that my life is not the way it used to be and i want to straighten out my ways with god if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three i'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here i want you to come out right where i am here wherever you are god bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them god bless you god bless you as you come quickly god bless you as you come you need jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process jesus said i am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i receive you i receive your life i as i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye